give all the praises and the honor to Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shah Bahashem, Racha Ha Kodash, and double honors to the elder apostles and elder bishops of Great Millstone. Honors also to you other brethren, you followers of the truth, even you few sisters, and Shalom to the elect. So anyway, I'm just now getting to this video. Um, I just watched it on Apostle Tahar's channel. And I went to the, I actually saw the video, the original video was Vocab Malone goes off again. Sometimes I don't comment, but I, I see some of it. And this guy here, Judah Israel, I'm going to just say that. He left a comment, according to the RSV, blow the trumpet at the new moon, at the full moon, on our feast day. So now this can be confusing because it says new moon and full, full moon. But in the actual translation, they did away with full moon and said at the anointed time. You know, we'll get into that too. But what, what's crazy is he said according to the RSV. But when we go to the RSV, they had a problem with Deuteronomy 22 and 28. What about that? <laughs> Where it says, um, if a man finds a you know a virgin, and he seizes seizes her who is not betrothed and seizes her, then he should get a damsel's father fifty shekels of silver. Let's go to CSB because I like going to different translations as well. If a man encounters a young woman, a virgin who is not engaged, takes holds of her and rapes her. And they be discovered. Then the, uh, then the man should give the damsel's father 50 shekels of silver. Wait a minute. It's kind of crazy how they all go into these other translations to prove that it's not the new moon but the full moon. But somehow in Deuteronomy 28, 22 and 28, they have no answer for it. They will not go in to Deuteronomy 22 and 28 for whatever reason. We'll get into the new moon, full moon thing in a second. It says, <laughs> uh, there's so many different translations that don't even say lay hold. But lay hold is a, another terminology. Uh, the ISV says seizes her. Right? This is crazy how all these translations are here. They somehow ignore all these translations. <clears throat> but when it comes to fit their doctrine, they hop on board. And try to go to the other translations. The RSV says, if a man meets a virgin who is not betrothed and seizes her and lies with her, then they be found. What does seize, be, seize mean? Seize mean to catch and take. Right? It also says, suppose a man find a young virgin, which proves this is not a 21-year-old woman, man. These people are crazy in these doctrines. That's a new doctrine. That's another doctrine. I believe Sakari and them teach it. I don't know if IUIC teaches it, that a woman must be 21 to be considered uh, ready to have sex in a young woman or whatever. So meanwhile, the time of her ovulation and periods, and she's in heat uh, when the time, you know, when it's time full for her to have sex and she's burning for 10 years, she's just got to suffer it out. I don't know. Even the animals have a course. There's no special time limit on animals to have sex. And everybody knows this. But somehow, it's a, a strict time limit on when a young woman has sex. That's crazy. It could be 12, it could be 13, it could be 14. But we don't teach that, and I'm not here to teach that it's okay to rape either. The rape of the, uh, the, the Western culture. Because there's wickedness on both sides of the coin on, on everything. Anyway, let's go back to Psalms 83. I just want to get to that real quick. I'm just it's amazed how all of a sudden they went to the R. He, this guy goes to the RSV version just, just to point out full moon. But when we go to the CSB version and you know various other versions of the Bible, the TLV, the YLT, right? The, even at um, the NIV says rape, but now all of a sudden it's an issue. <laughs> okay, 
Psalms 80, 81 and 3. I might jump around a little bit. So you might have to bear with me a little bit on this. I got to even find the, the, the actual verse. Psalm 83 and 1. I can almost quote it. It says, blow up the trumpet in the new moon and in a time appointed. It doesn't say full moon here because there was a big discrepancy. Right? I'll show you also in the oldest, one of the oldest translations, it don't even say full moon. Just in this translation, it doesn't say full moon. But there is a reason for the moons. Okay? That's a, the most hot set up. The, the, you know, the, the heavens, the sun, so you know, so you know, morning, you know, that's why people say good morning, but somehow morning is 12 o'clock midnight, you know, afternoon, evening, you know, so forth. When it's sun up, sun down. So anyway, on our solemn feast day, so I went to the commentary, uh, I think I went, I tried to go to it, I was reading on it yesterday. I had to go to camp and then got back and hung out a little bit with brothers. So I didn't get a chance to finish. Um, but I'll get back to Psalms 83, 83 and 1. I'm going to go into the, uh, um, the commentary, one of the commentaries on it. Um, this is, I'm going to go right here, the Elliot. The Ellicott's commentary for English readers, it says, I'm, I'm not going to go to the new moon. We're going to go into the appointed, into the time appointed, right? It says, this renders of the rendering giving of the Hebrew kaseth, kasa by long array of authorities. But in Proverbs 7 and 20, the only other place where the word is found, the Vulgate, gives after many days and while the English margin has new moon Aquila and Jerome give full moon right this later meaning of is supported by the fact of the Syrian version of the 15th day of the month I'm just going to read a little bit more um, they said here is um the same word is used for the 23rd day, hence it's supposed to denote the whole time of the moon's waning from the full, right? It seems therefore hardly possible that uh, these words um, are put together. Here, as some think through, it is strange to find both the new and full moon mentioned together. Some remove the difficulty by reading with the Syriac chow D, right? So you can see here, those, they're not technically together. This is why other translations don't have it. And I'll go to the Gill's translation and go in a little further. The Gill's translation says, blow up the trumpet in the new moon. Why does it say new moon? We'll get to that. Either, this will break it down, I mean, you should know, either in every new moon or first day of the month, which was religiously observed by the Jews, 2 Kings 4 and 23, or rather the new moon for first day of the seventh month. So, as I ask the Israelites who believe the Sabbath is Friday sundown to Saturday sundown, if we didn't have the Gregorian calendar um, I think it's another calendar but the Gregorian calendar um, of the Pope Gregory how did we know in the ancient time what particular days was the seventh day or so forth or what holy day was if we didn't know the first day so you would have to know the first day how would you get that you definitely wouldn't go on a time of a full moon because it's made full you would have to go when everything's new this is why you have a Passover the Lord is dealing with things being renewed that was the whole purpose of Apostle Paul Yahawasha right let me say that and the Apostles of Apostle Paul said be re be renewed 
you know, be made new, right? Um, you know, as the scripture says, incorruption can't put on corruption. You know, you have to be made new. But anyway, um, on the first day of the seventh month, the month uh, Siri, I guess it says there, which day was the memorial of the blowing of trumpets, Leviticus 23-34, and so the Targum blow the trumpet in the month of Siri. When their new moon, here it goes, when their new year began and was typical of the year of the redeemed of the Lord, of the acceptable year of our, of our God, it says here, our power, of the famous new year, the gospel dispensation, and all things passed away, and all things became new, right? There is no way that the Sabbath is going to come on a full moon. It's going to come on a new moon, you know? All these, you know, our holy days, you know? The Jews say blowing of the trumpet was a commemoration of Isaac's deliverance, and ram being sacrificed for him, therefore they sounded the trumpets made with ram's horns on remembrance of the trumpets blown, blown at the giving of the law. Though though it rather was an emblem of the gospel, and a ministry of it by which sinners are aroused, awakened, quickened, and souls are charmed and allured, and filled with spiritual joy and gladness. Okay, this is the last part. In the time appointed, here we go. In the time appointed, so Abin Ezra, Joshi, these people, interpret the word of a set fixed time, like in Proverbs 7 and 20, if you read that. Um, it says the word is used as, has the significant, significant, si signification, signification, let me say that, of a covering, right? And, the former of these understand of it all when you go to the other translations which i read some of the other commentaries they was going into the full moon representing the covering right that's what it said but i'm just going on here what it's saying here because the moon did have phases right used just like you got sun up sun down you know when the moon certain ways it, it has different signs and it's a, a signification okay of covering um, and the former of these understand it of the, the time just before the change of the moon, when it is covered, which falls on the former phrase, former phase, okay, uh, and so targum. So it says in the point of time, um, it interprets a set fixed time, right? The word used is signification of covering, right? So at the end of the day, you would have the new moon. This is what it's talking about, the new moon. There's a reason why that. Let's go to the scriptures now. Let's go to, um, let's go to Psalms 104.9, 104.19. He appointed the moon for seasons with an S. The sun north is going down, right? So every, you know, if you're in the truth, you should know that. Isaiah 66 to 23, which means you're not going to do Friday, Saturday, sundown, Sabbaths, you know. Isaiah 66 to 23. And it shall come to pass that from one, moon, one new moon to another and from one Sabbath to another. Why isn't full moon mixed up in here? These are these guys that just go in. And they see something, and, and you know, to make new, right, to make your doctrine whole to the people, you have to change up things to separate yourself from other people so you could seem like you have the deep truth, right? And shall all flesh come to worship before, him, before me, saith the Lord. I mean, there's so many scriptures on that. I'm just going through a couple right now. It says, uh, 1 Chronicles 23 and 31, And offer all burnt sac sac sacrifices unto the Lord in the Sabbaths and in the new moons, right? The Sabbaths and in the new moons, 
and on the set feast, right, by the number according to uh, the order commanded under the uh, continually before the Lord. So there's an order, right? So when we go down here, when you hit new moons, age 23 and 20, it just says new moon. It says here the new moon monthly, the first day of the month. Right? That's what it says. And when you go in more to the Hebrew child D lexicon, it says the new moon, the day of the new moon, the calends, calendars of lunar month, which was the festival of the ancient Hebrews. Right? <laughs> That's what it is. So why is they trying to knock out the new moon for whatever reason? This is crazy. I don't think I have much else to say this. It says, so appointed time, um, it says here, appointed time meeting. Let me see what we at here. I don't I don't, uh, don't understand it. What's wrong with Jake and this uh, constantly flooding in new doctrines? I guess it's the IUIC. Um, it says here, appointed time, H3677. Let's see what it says. H3677. Well, actually, this is H4143. 47. Let's see what it says here. Appointed place, appointed time, meeting, appointed time, general sacrifice season, um, appointed meetings. Uh, that's pretty much it. A set time. That's pretty much it. So you will see, you may see full moon in there, but it's always starting with the new moon. Right? It says the new moon and an appointed time. And you'll see here it says full moon. Right? But it says here according to, I'm just now reading this. It, um, the first day of the full moon also the whole time of the full moon and so it's often used by uh bar bar hebrews and ephraim sirius the etymology is not clear to me right for it is not satisfactory to say that it is so called from the whole moon being being then covered with light so they're having a confusion there. That's why it was kept out. I just now read this. I didn't know where it was going to go. So they said it's not even clear of why it says full moon. But the other uh, commentary I went into, it said it just simply meant a covering. Right? I just did a lot. You know, we did some reading. I did some reading and research. Um, I watched. I just think I finished watching Apostle Tahars on that and how he said when it says the full moon and the new moon you know there's a separation it says hiding a uh, covering it says right here the sense of hiding and covering over but never as far as I know to that given light so there you have it you know that's why the scripture says teach, stick to that which you know teach what thou has been taught you know, trying to be deeper and going over deeper and deeper and deeper. You'll go so deep that you'll wind up drowning. Again, I can't understand why these guys didn't go into Deuteronomy 22, 22nd chapter when it came to this stuff, man. It, 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 the other translations. What happened? That's all I have on that, Shalom.